Okay, good morning, all. On behalf of on behalf of Katpam Institute of Technology and CSE Department, it's my immense pleasure to welcome all of you for the webinar on inter and outer environments are connected. The superior science. It is a great honor for me to introduce and welcome our chief guest of this session, Dr. M. Elilarsi. Uh, Dr. M. Elilarsi, Associate Dean and Academics from uh, Kumarguru College of Technology, is an alumnus of GCT and MIT with a doctoral in medical imaging. She has 30 years of academic experience uh, spread over in the roles of teaching, research, and administration. She also served as a principal for over five years at KGSL Institute of Technology. And she has published and reviewed many research papers, uh, produced seven PhDs and a grant pattern. She has been in the board of studies of reputed institutions and she is a member of ISTE, ISOI, CSI, associate member of IEE, and also a fellow of institutions of engineers. She has been deeply interested in, inter in internalization for the past 30 years and an ardent practitioner and a trainer of medication under heartfulness Day. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm handing over the session uh, to Dr. Elilar Sri for addressing the gathering. Ma'am, you can start with your session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vikish, for the nice introduction. So I'm so happy, I'm so glad uh, to connect with all of you. So I understood from Professor Vignesh that, you know, uh, all of you belong to the first year of engineering. Uh, and uh, it's really nice on one side that you are entering into a college, but uh, uh, you are connecting with all your teachers, your campus virtually, and uh, that is not really a very palatable experience, I know. but uh, I think, you know, you are uh, caught up in such a period of uh, the world crisis where the pandemic is uh, troubling, you know, all the people across the globe. And uh, we know pretty well that there are so many souls suffering at this time and uh, so many families are affected by this. I think at this uh, juncture, it's important for us to humbly submit our, you know, prayer or uh, the request plea to the almighty or the higher force uh, for uh, the you know the well-being of everyone across the globe uh, i think you know with this note let me comes uh, the uh, today's session so when uh, the head of the department of uh, computer science and engineering at the karpagam college uh, asked me about the kind of topic and uh, in fact i was uh, brooding over and uh, this is a kind of, uh, I think it, it, it is a situation where uh, we need to do uh, something for the environment to a you know, large extent. I think we have been hearing the problem of pollution, the ozone, the hole in the ozone layer, and uh, the you know, uh, ice rocks melting okay, in the polar region. So like this, we have been hearing a lot of stories. And uh, that way, we know to some extent that our environment is at risk. And uh, that way, uh, you know, this outer environment, what can we really do as an individual? So that way, I think we can definitely be a contributor uh, of, you know, mending this or fixing this problem to a large extent. So what can we really do? It's all about uh, the superior science, you know, where the inner and the outer environments are truly, truly connected. So, in fact, I came across a nice uh, quote uh, given by Patricia Lohan. And uh, this is a quote lifted from, uh, stolen from internet. So, you are a mirror of your environment. Your outer world reflects your inner world. So, I think I just repeat, it's a, it's a very important quote that all of us must remember. You are a mirror of your environment. Your outer world reflects your inner world. So let us see. Uh, let me uh, take you, walk you through some of the interesting facts of you know what's happening. 
we all know that we are living on this beautiful planet and uh, we call it as mother earth and if you look at uh, the planet the mother earth and it's it's you know in the whole of the big universe it's a tiny tiny you know speck because the universe is so vast and uh, when we look at the age of the earth it is billions of years old and uh, our life compared to the life of earth is nothing in the time scale it is almost nothing we can live up to probably 100 years but 100 years compared to in the time scale of billions of years it is almost even if you keep a dot it won't be visible but it has taken millions of years for mankind to reach this level of awareness okay but still mere 10 to 30 years okay it is nothing but the blink of an eye in the geological you know perspective if you are not going to act in a positive manner there is a danger or not able to come back or there is a danger of extinction you know what is extinction completely the planet might get destroyed it cannot be retrieved okay so this is the danger that people are you know the scientists or the foreseers you know they are trying to warn the whole of the world the people how we are supposed to act but uh, although we hear about the pollution we hear about all these we don't seem to really care about you know all these but instead we try to you know we go on with our mood of enjoyment happiness seeking pleasure so that way we are carried away so we drive our cars or you know we you know uh, have merry time with our friends we don't really care care anything for you know doing better for this planet but what happens here so this is what uh, the you know the important uh, journal uh, time usually they uh, depict a man or a woman or the celebrity in their journals i think for the first time probably in 1989 uh, you know this journal published an article the complete journal was you know completely about what happens to the endangered earth or uh, the picture that you can look at what happens you know and uh, they were trying to highlight only superficially not to the extent so somewhere they said the human beings and the natural world we are on a collision course okay and this damage whatever we are trying to do for this planet is completely irreversible okay the damage that we are creating we will not be able to get back the planet if you are going to continue in the same fashion if we are not going to correct our the mode of working or the practices there is a serious risk okay for the future for the animal kingdom for the plant the human being everyone okay every life on this planet is at risk so the fundamental changes are very very urgent so all these are the important uh, you know statements taken from a warning document which was prepared by a set of you know scientists they all held a summit so united nations uh, they used to conduct the summits every uh, decade okay once in every decade so that way this 1992 summit you know seemed to be very 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 significant and where we could see the largest gathering of heads of the state in the history of the world so that way all the you know the leaders in the science area you know they were all gathered across the globe and uh, you know that way you know uh, the there were actually more than half of the population of no they were all together and uh, unfortunately the united states they didn't participate because it felt that the money and the economy were greater than the earth they felt if they are going to get into this uh, you know fixing problem they might lose their economy so that's what 
America, you know, things and, uh, but uh, probably the new president is looking at it in a different way. He, you know, promises that he will fix, okay, he will get into this uh, treaty. So the document was prepared by the world scientist, you know, it was titled World Scientist Warning to Humanity. And this was released five months after the summit that happened in 1992, and uh, where 1,600 senior scientists from 71 countries, you know, they were all together and uh, preparing this document and uh, releasing the most alarming warning to the world, you know, which has ever received such a powerful body of, you know, uh, researchers. They were trying to, you know, tell that we are at a, you know, a turning point. I mean, somewhere we have to act very, very quickly on this. And uh, somewhere, this is a cartoon which was uh, shown, you know, although that scientists were shouting, screaming, or giving an alarm. So all these are not heard by the political, you know, parties and uh, the, you know, strong players of the whole of the world. So that way, and the, the truth is being hidden and, uh, you know, undermined. So the common people are carried away by the routine and the, you know, totally ignorant of the threat around us. So now this is the situation which is uh, taken from one of the books where if you look at the whole of the world, the land is about, you know, 30% and the ocean is about 70%. Uh, and if you look at the orange and the red one is a, uh, highly uh, the pollution generating countries. So that way, you know, the biggest polluter is America, but uh, they are not in the role of, you know, fixing these problems. So here comes, okay, some of the other, uh, I think a very, very uh, pathetic information. It's all about the dying oceans. This is the first very serious threat. So, we might have you know learned about the pollution at various level the soil pollution air pollution water pollution noise pollution electric pollution the pollution is not just one there are many but each one is trying to have its own impact on this planet but knowing that our planet is covered 70 percent by water how seriously we have to look at uh, the dying oceans. So I think the sea, uh, once it casts its spell, these are all, uh, you know, the sayings given by Jacques and who is a French explorer, a person who was respected by the globe, the whole of all the nations respected him because he had deeper knowledge about the ocean. So that way, uh, I think he had written a book on, you know, in 1970s, late 70s, foreseeing what will happen to uh, the kind of pollution in the oceans. These are all some of the important uh, statements that he made, you know, he actually uttered. So the sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. So that is the beauty of the sea. But here comes the danger water and air, the two essential fluids on which all life depends have become global garbage cans. Very pathetic, very pathetic. So whatever garbage we have, we just dump it in the air and we dump it in the you know, ocean. So that way, these two have become the garbage cans for the humanity. So, and the, we are at a great risk so in fact, he says that it's a great unifier, the water, okay, but uh, the sea, but that's the only hope for the human being because it takes not only the garbage, it also absorbs the negative, you know, energy. So that way, you know, the literal meaning, okay, we are all, but we are all living on the same planet, sharing the same thing, and we are all sailing on the same boat. So this is what he said, where, I think one of the uh, actors, you know, he just wanted to know about what's happening, you know, when he said the dying oceans. I just wanted to play this video for you and uh, just have a look at. So Vignesh, you can tell me whether it's uh, audio is
we've assumed, assumed that the ocean, ocean is too big to fail. fail. We've assumed, assumed that we can put pollution into the ocean, ocean and it'll just go away and not come back and won't build up. But what we've learned over the last uh, 50 years is that the ocean is fine, that there are limits to what it can absorb. At the moment, it's showing all the signs that it's on wobbly legs. How is it trying to tell us? What are the signs? It's an ocean which hasn't been this warm or changing temperature for thousands of years. And we're seeing a change in the chemistry of the ocean that has no parallel in 65 million years, if not 300 million years. You're looking at an experiment we've been running over the last 12 months, and this experiment has been exposing uh, parts of coral reefs to uh, warmer and more acidic oceans. When you actually look at the process in which they build their skeletons, skeletons, it's all proceeding a lot slower. slower. And And it's got a form form of osteoporosis. osteoporosis. What you see see here is is that uh, most most of the corals corals are dead. dead. Any coral coral that survives survives is bleached. bleached. You can see see that. that. Oh my god. This to me looks, looks like, like death. death. Truly, truly shocking. shocking. It's, it's truly, truly shocking. shocking. Well, that's, that's safely say that we've probably lost 40 to 50 percent of corals across the planet in the last 50 years. Within Within 20 20 or 30 30 years time, time, you don't don't have have coral anymore. To be clear, if we continue down, even the current path, path, if we just just continue continue as we're going right now, coral coral reefs will cease cease to exist by mid-century of this this century. century. Yep. Yep. 35 35 years from now. So the experiment, experiment we're, we're running, running right, right now, now is going to be with us for 300, 600 generations of years. So I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very, very important uh, video where uh, they are trying to understand that it's almost 50% of the ocean is already dead. It's only the rest of the 50% and in another 35 years. So because we already, we have seen that the age of the planet is, you know, billions of years. And in few tens of years, few decades, if you are going to, if you are not going to correct our attitude and the way in which we act, and it is going to be really, really, really dangerous if the oceans are dead. And uh, I think it's understandable that the whole, uh, the life species on this planet are going to extinguish. So it is it is a very, very clear uh, sign. And uh, probably this is one of the first signs, you know, that showed up. 
So the red tide is the first deadly sign of the pollution. So you can see that it's an algae that destroys everything that lives underneath it. It kills everything, literally it kills everything. So initially it happened to be seen around Japan, but these days, okay, I think, you know, this is one of the recent. So if you look at the published date and the year, it's a few days back, April 30th, 2021 at 6.31. Okay, so this is what we see. Red tide blooms continue causing fish kills and respiratory irritations in Southwest Florida. Now it is prevalent across the globe. So wherever the seashore and we are able to see this red tide is, you know, happening. So I think, you know, it's a very, very serious threat. And, uh, you know, here comes something very interesting. So what happens when we look at the water, the ocean, is it just a water body, pool of water body, or is it something more than that? I think here comes another interesting scientific discovery, very interesting scientific discovery that our thoughts can affect the water physically. Just imagine how it can affect us. Here comes uh, the, uh, the great scientist of Japan, Masari Moto, and he has done wonderful experiments with water. What he did is a very, very simple experiment. What he did, he simply took a drop of water and in the chemistry lab, you know, normally we use a small uh, glass dish, which is called a Petri dish. You know, he just put one drop of water and uh, put it inside the freezer. And uh, the water drop crystallizes into ice. And he took it out once it's frozen. And uh, even before melting, he just put it under a microscope, magnified it many times, and saw the crystal structure. The experiment is all about this only. But before taking the water droplet, he was trying to impress some of the thoughts. And uh, you know pretty well that for any scientific experiment, okay, it should be repeatable by anybody, any place, anywhere. Only then we can really take the results of the scientific experiment. So he did this, you know, in 50 different Petri, you know, dishes. And also, you know, many people are keep on trying this at many places and they seem to be really wondering about the kind of results that they are able to see. And here, if you look at the kind of picture that you see here is the first one, okay, is something like, you know, whenever we put the positive thought, so what he did is he just impressed, okay, the thought by holding the cup of water or he even typed it in word processor and uh, tied that word around the beaker overnight. He tried different things and uh, wonderfully the results were amazing. And uh, for the good thoughts, we are able to see the water molecules are arranging themselves in a nice way and it glitters like diamond. Okay, and if you look at, uh, you know, the Imagine, uh, the John Lennon, and uh, thank you, Love, if you look at all these, all these are beautiful crystals. But if you look at the negative thought, I will kill you, it is chaotic, dark, and uh, absolutely no proper structure in the crystal. And, uh, you know, it's, it's taking a different color altogether. And uh, also he did another experiment, okay, taking the water from Fujiwara where, you know, he took the same water and one part of the sample without offering prayer and the other sample after offering prayer, same water molecule, same water sample, but before and after. And uh, look at the pictures, look at the pictures and they found out that uh, the thought can influence the molecular structure. If the thought is so powerful, focused, it can work like a laser beam. And for ordinary people, you know, it is happening at the microscopic level. So, and therefore, we need a microscope to look at 
the kind of difference this happens for anybody you can also try this experiment you know once you are back to college try this experiment for yourself okay there is uh, there will be if you have a biotechnology lab i think you know you have a microscope there you can definitely try even otherwise you can you know take a i mean there is a tiny paper microscope which is available in the internet called fold scope okay it it costs just 1 dollar you can purchase and attach it with your you know mobile phone and you can see the structure for yourself so try this seriously impressing the positive thoughts how it you know behaves and uh, you know impressing the negative thought you know how the difference is so that is why the intention experimenter you know lin you know he said targeting your thoughts or what scientists refer to as intention appear to produce an energy which is potent enough to change the physical reality if you are able to think okay uh, nicely in a better way i think we can really create a nice beautiful you know the water particles around us so we know that the ocean is 70% water and our body is also 70% water when we carry uh, water how careful we should be about you know the thoughts that we generate so a simple thought seem to have the power to change our world so this is the phenomenal understanding of the scientists and also i think uh, recently uh, the uh, the quantum scientists in the quantum world okay they are slowly entering into the metaphysics where they are able to understand and appreciate the power of thought how it is really impacting the external world so i think this is not a very new one it happened long back look at our great scientist of india so what is actually interesting or important for us to uh, know at this juncture where we see a real global crisis where whatever in the name of technology we invented everything seems to be wrong invention and most of our discoveries inventions are in the you know not abiding by the universal law or the natural law we are completely you know deviating from the natural path and therefore creating a chaos on the planet earth and these people understood this long back and uh, they all meditated they all internalized they all you know purified their you know conscience and the intuition worked very well very well and uh, there is an institute recently you know form, formed by a group of doctors they call it as heart math institute heart math institute you can browse and see so it is a you know great institution where all the doctors are trying to discover something new for the first time and uh, when they dissected and found out that the heart is having you know so many neurons neurons are only found in the brain okay then yeah, that way they were thinking that the intelligence or the thinking capability is only for the brain but recently they discovered that the neurons are found in the heart so they understand that there is a bigger intelligence sitting in the heart and it is connecting with the brain and this connectivity you know on at one point they understand that even the brain is being guided by the heart so that is why people said you know hard hearted stone hearted and the, the act that we make okay it's all based on the quality with which is each person is you know living on this planet and here these uh, great scientists you know they actually uh, internalized themselves to a large extent purified themselves to a large extent and the, their inventions are are in alignment with the nature so these days recently the government of india is trying to connect with all iits the indian institute of technology and iisc where they are all asked to explore these ancient you know the sci scientific discoveries so there is a team of people trying to uh, recruit phd scholars iit karakpur they are doing it full time basis they want to explore this more and more so you know if you look at uh, for example saint uh, bharadwaj 
and he discovered this uh, flying chariot long back it worked on mercury so it's called vimana shastra so i think you know they could do all these uh, you know they could analyze anything sitting at uh, the place wherever they were but with no external instruments because we all possess the internal instruments so they did great research and findings of you know so many things so here comes the proof or you know uh, for us to understand that we can definitely uh, you know correct our attitude to a large extent and here comes okay one of the very very important message for the humanity this is called whispers from the brighter world and uh, here comes the great souls trying to communicate to the humanity about what is the current situation we have been drawing your attention to the ravages of pollution for a long time governments hide the seriousness of the situation having enough to eat is a problem for many individuals on earth but one day soon it will become widespread even for those who are well off where i think here comes the clear warning today only a few of you know i think we are not really sure what's happening in the other part of the world you know earth and we feel comfortable that i we we get the daily meal we are prosperous we are fine we are okay with what we have but okay there are many individuals on earth still having this problem of having their own food and uh, but one day it is going to be widespread so even the well off people are going to face the same problem because the governments hide the seriousness of the situation pollution is in the soil in the air that you breathe and around the globe okay completely polluted you you see that there are so many chaos you know in terms of disease although there appear to be superficially improvements in the medical sciences and uh, where people are not able to understand why there are so many diseases coming up you know which are unknown to the world previously so that way the pollution in the soil air you know everywhere you know it's all polluted so there is no clean air there is no clean soil pollution is everywhere affecting every part of our cell these different kinds of pollution overlap and will bring about increasing difficulties particularly with regard to food i think human beings you know to for the survival we depend on food and water if you are not going to get enough food or water for the survival just think about what's going to happen in the future the political leaders will not be able to bury their heads in the sand indefinitely so they cannot really hide the situation for long talking about these cases of sick cows is not enough in the future all animals will know difficulties of this nature okay uh, how you know the all uh, races are going to suffer because of this the plant kingdom is not spared to a lesser extent it shows similar risks due to farming methods which add to the various forms of pollution so if agriculture livestock farming and all that relates to food are not reviewed and corrected in a radical way there will be serious problems more and more you should be very vigilant about your nutrition your health hinges on that babuji so i think you know this is a very very serious message to the whole of the humanity i think of the whole of the engineering you know graduates so whenever we try to do something you know for the humanity we are all here for the upliftment of the human race not to bring them down so if you look at the steam engine that is the first erratic discovery or invention which started with the pollution so now all the automobiles you know they are all creating all kinds of pollution the industries the major cause for the pollution and uh, if you look at you know the uh, all the, the plastics so we discovered all wrong things and we are not able to reverse it so even before inventing i think it is the responsibility of the engineers to look at you know or to connect uh, you know internally with our intuition 
to understand what we are doing is whether right or wrong if you are not able to grow internally purify ourselves internally whatever we do it's all creating chaos and uh, i think you know somewhere the whole of the world moved towards you know the illusion of creating economy and money so that is not the only focus that we should have where the values are completely lost the attitude is on the the inner attitude of jealous hatred violence now it's all getting reflected everywhere around so the inner environment if it is not purified kept properly you cannot really do anything outside because the root is here and this is all the outside whatever you are seeing is only fruits of the trees that we have grown out of the seeds which are lying inside us and if you are not going to remove the you know the bad seeds and to cultivate the only the good seeds inside it's not going to happen the change the radical change whatever we are expecting outside cannot happen forever so i think you know this is a very important message which i wanted to uh, you know pass it on to all of you and uh, so what i would urge all the youngsters you know i think you should start dreaming of beautiful world at the thinking level because each one of us is carrying an antenna remember we are carrying an antenna this is what masaru emoto is trying to tell us he says we seem to carry an antenna and the antenna we are carefree we think that you know whatever we think is kept in secret it's not so we keep radiating around the atmosphere anybody who is capable of picking our thought in the atmosphere can definitely pick at any time anywhere so it is possible remember we are all open books for many people you know to see us and we think that it is our foolishness we think that we are actually secretly keeping something for ourselves it is not so so first of all we should be aware that we are open books and uh, probably some of the higher beings are able to look at us and the pity the kind of behavior with which we are walking on this planet and uh, somewhere we should be really careful in shaping our thoughts better and better and uh, this is what uh, swami vivekananda also said and uh, you should leave the planet better than how you came into so how can you really create a better planet by keeping your thoughts in the proper channel how how to keep your thoughts in the proper channel and uh, it's a beautiful instrument uh, bestowed for the humanity and we have a beautiful you know system instrument the mind with us but we are supposed to regulate it you know make it proper and it is it can be achieved by simple acts of meditation so meditation is a technique it is not uh, meant for only the privileged few it is not so it is almost you know it is it is a process where each individual has to understand what is actually deep inside us okay if if you are not going to bend yourself i mean this is what i think the great uh, sages said if you are going to win the whole world outside and if you are going to lose yourself what is the point in you know losing the whole thing i mean it is it, it is as good as losing everything so instead of trying to conquer whatever is outside so the first step moving forward is to conquer our own individual and then look at the world now the world is going to be more beautiful more wonderful you know how to fix your problems you know how to be compassionate you will know how to really coexist on this planet giving space for every species on this planet and the danger is and uh, there were actually 30 million species living on this planet but in a short period of some 30 years we lost okay almost uh, you know 50% now you know it's only 15 million species that was uh, told in 1990s i'm not sure what is the you know it it keeps on if you are going to get it onto the space and look at this planet you can see that it's a dying planet very rapidly very rapidly it's dying if you are going to watch this planet from above so such is the danger with which we are all in i think you know we have to really push in and look at okay the way in which 
so look at the way in which uh, you know a child of this age okay and uh, she is trying to tell us something wonderful uh, i would like to play this for you and uh, just it's a, it's a wonderful in the summit that happened in 1992 a girl from canada of age 13 years and uh, she just bellowed okay for the whole of the world just listen to her girls trying to make a difference Vanessa Sally Morgan Geisler Michelle Quick and me we raised all the money to come here ourselves to come 5000 miles to tell the US we must change our ways coming up here today i have no hidden agenda i am fighting for my future Losing my future is not like losing an election or a few points on the stock market. I'm here to speak for all generations to come. I'm here to speak speak on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard. I'm here to speak for the countless animals dying across this planet because they have nowhere left to go. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. I am afraid to breathe the air because I don't know what chemicals are in it. I used to go on, I used to go fishing in Vancouver, my home, with my dad, until just a few years ago we found the fish full of cancers. And now we hear of animals and plants going extinct every day, vanishing forever. In my life, I have dreamt of seeing the great herds of what Friday's not that easy, but grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. Wild animals, jungles, and rainforests, full of birds and butterflies. But now I wonder if they will even exist for my children to see. Did you have to worry of these things when you were my age? All this is happening before our eyes and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. I'm only a child and I don't have all the solutions. But I know I want you to realize neither do you. You don't know how to fix the holes in our ozone layer. You don't know how to bring the salmon back up in a dead stream. You don't know how to bring back an animal now extinct. And, and you can't bring back the forest that the once grew where there is now a desert. If you don't know how to fix it, please stop breaking it. Here you may be delegates of your government, business people, organizers, reporters, or politicians, but really your mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles, and all of you. or someone's child I'm only a child yet I know we are all part of a family 5 billion strong in fact 3 million species strong and borders and governments will never change that I'm only a child yet I know we are all in this together and should act as one single world towards one single goal in In my anger, I am not blind, and in my fear, I am not afraid of telling the world how I feel. In my country, we make so much waste. We buy and throw away, buy and throw away, buy and throw away, and yet northern countries will not share with the needy. Even when we have more than enough, we are afraid to share. We are afraid to let go of some of our wealth. In Canada, we live the privileged life. with plenty of food, water and shelter. We have watches, bicycles, computers and television sets. The list could go on for two days. Two days ago here in Brazil, we were shocked when we spent time with some children living on the streets. This is what one child told us. I wish I was rich. And if I were, I would give all the street children food, clothes, medicines, shelter. and love and affection 
If, if a, a child, child on the streets who has nothing is willing to share, why are we who have everything still so greedy? I can't stop thinking that these are children my own age, that it makes a tremendous difference where you were born, that I could be one of those children living in the favelas of Rio. I could be a child starving in Somalia, or a victim of war in the Middle East, or a beggar in India. I am only a child, yet I know if all the money spent on war was spent on finding environmental answers, ending poverty, and finding treaties, what a wonderful place this earth would be. At school, even in kindergarten, you teach us how to behave in the world. You teach us to not fight with others, to work things out, to respect others, to clean up our mess, not to hurt other creatures, to share, not be greedy. Then why do you go out and do the, do the things you tell us not to do? Do not forget why you are attending these conferences. Who are you doing this for? Where are your own children? You are deciding what kind of world you are growing up in. Parents should be able to comfort their children by saying, everything's going to be all right. It's not the end of the world. And we're, and we're doing the best we can. But I don't think you can say that to us anymore. Are we even on your list of priorities? My dad always says, you are what you do, not what you say. Well, what you do makes me cry at night. You grown up say you love us, but I challenge you, please, make your actions reflect your words. Thank you. So I think it was a very, very, very powerful, uh, you know, uh, audio and uh, you know, video where, uh, you know, every word that this little girl is uttering is, you know, going deep into our system and, uh, you know, bringing out emotional, you know, outburst. So somewhere, you know, we should be able to act it is not enough we just hear and walk out, but we should be able to act on this. So with this, I think, you know, we are coming to the conclusion of uh, the today's uh, presentation. So my appeal to all the young budding engineers and uh, please swear that you will be acting on saving this world. And as engineer, try to bring in the internal connectivity as much as you can. And uh, since I'm also a kind of you know, meditation trainer and uh, I know the kind of benefit I get out of this, we are able to look at the world in a different perspective. So that way, my plea to all of you is start doing something about starting this meditation practice. It could be anything as per your comfort. And uh, here comes uh, the heartfulness meditation, which is a very, very simple technique. Anybody can try this. And uh, so with this, uh, uh, Vignesh, uh, Professor Vignesh, are you there? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. So if we can do it, it's a five minute uh, guided meditation, which I want to give this experience to all yes. the students. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. So please uh, listen to uh, you know the global guide, and he is going to walk you through the simple relaxation technique. And uh, you can you know if you feel really good about you know you can continue, but practice any kind of meditation technique, whatever is suiting you. Please. You can put every other on the floor with uh, cross legs, or you can sit like this. Okay, and. Uh, we have, we have to focus, focus on our feet first. Okay. Eyes closed. Ready? Yeah. Please yeah. try this. All of you, Take please close your eyes. And it's for all the earth is entering your feet. And it's helping you relax your feet first. We can get over and see how they are getting relaxed. 
feel that energy entering to feed to be real now. Ankle, feel that it is relaxing. Let that energy move upward. We have no limbs to our muscles. Feel that energy help you relax there. Let this energy move upward into your knees. The entire area touching the chair, the body surface area, the thighs, your back, getting relaxed. Do the energy circulating the entire back. Let this energy move towards front, the abdomen muscles, and the chest area is getting relaxed. Take the energy very gently now to your shoulders. And as it's entering there, and it's melting away your shoulders, feeling extremely light over there. Let it flow down the upper arms and elbow, lower arms, wrist, your palm, the fingers. It's okay if the energy is moving out between your fingers. None two minutes, ma'am. None? Hello? Feel the whole body. None two minutes. Two minutes, ma'am. One day, ma'am. Okay. Now, let this energy move through your neck muscles. And feel how they are deep stressed. They become lighter and more relaxed. Allow this energy to move upward. Ear lobes, your facial muscles, your lips, your eyes, your forehead. Things are getting relaxed. Feel the lightness, gentleness in your eyes. The top of the head, your crown chakra. Completely relaxed now. Now you can see the whole system. Top to the floor. Visualize it completely relaxed. Now, when the whole system is in this state, slowly bring the attention towards the heart. And think of the presence of the divine light. So it's a simple uh, technique, uh, and uh, if you need any uh, support uh, regarding this, you can call me, or you can simply type heartfulness meditation and uh, 
you can connect with any of the trainers. So, so with this, uh, I think we are coming to the conclusion of today's presentation. I'm so happy uh, and thankful to uh, the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Karpagam College of Engineering for giving me this opportunity. And um, yeah, thanking uh, Professor Vignesh for the quality. Yes, Yes, ma'am. It's very, very uh, a good and uh, a great message for all of us uh, to say the environment. And I would like to thank you uh, very much, ma'am, uh, Dr. M. Elilarsi, for your uh, wonderful session and a great message to all of us. Okay. And I would like to thank our uh, management uh, principal, Dr. Manimoran, Vice Principal, Dr. Bonu, and our department heads, staff members, and the student members uh, to make this event a great success. And once again, I thank all and uh, one and all present here to make the event a brand success. And it's our, it is our collective and individual responsibility to preserve and attend to the world in which we all live. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the presentation, ma'am. Thank you. Please carry this uh, message uh, carefully and uh, try to work on it back then as much as possible. Thank you, sure, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, students, uh, the feedback link will be shared with you, okay, uh, after this session. Kindly fill it. Thank you very much. Ma'am, you can leave the studio, ma'am.